Hi everybody, it's Brian here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's episode, we're going to be covering a topic that is effectively on the minds of many print-on-demand sellers, but for some reason or another, they just don't understand how to go about doing it, or maybe just don't have the drive to, or perhaps maybe it just dunce them. And I'm talking about the third biggest visual search engine platform on the planet, that being Pinterest. So in today's episode, we're going to be looking at how we can use Pinterest to increase our print-on-demand sales, what we can do in terms of compiling some effective pins that should help us to get clicks and impressions on Pinterest, and hopefully lead more traffic to our print-on-demand websites, be it Redbubble, TeePublic, Zazzle, Society6, or what have you. So it's an interesting topic, an episode which I think is going to provide you with a lot of value. So with that said, let's get to it. Now, before we start with today's episode, the fact that you're here gives indication that you are interested in all things pertaining to print on demand. And for that, I want to thank you sincerely for taking the time out of your busy day to sit down and watch this episode. I sincerely hope that it gives you a lot of value and opens your perception to the wonderful tool that Pinterest is and all of the benefits that it can provide you. If you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like and don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a video to my channel. I upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday and the objective of this channel is to provide you with a lot of actionable tips and advice to help you take your print on demand business up to the next level. So with that said, let's head on over to my computer and start with today's episode. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. And as you can see here, I have a Pinterest page open. And just prior to the starting of this recording, um, I went ahead and I typed in the word t-shirt in the search field in order to see what will come up. And as you can see here, we are presented with a number of pins that are of various dimensions and obviously that have different types of designs. Some are really amazing designs. Some are designs which are subjective in terms of what we feel is really good and what maybe perhaps could be improved upon, but uh, that's not the reason for today's episode. The reason for today's episode is in order to see how we can use Pinterest in order to gain more attention, more potential customers to click and visit our respective print-on-demand shops. And as we can see here, We've got some action that is going on with respect to these pins. I mean, if we look at this one, this one has 15 likes, this one has 12, this one has 25. Some don't even have any likes. Perhaps maybe they were just recently posted or maybe they've been up for some time and maybe perhaps they just weren't of any interest to people who are actually searching Pinterest for this particular keyword. This one has 55, this one has 31. And again, while they're all good, there is something which is clearly lacking in the bulk of these pins. I mean, this one isn't that bad. You've got three different types of shirts which are being promoted here. But again, we've got a large one on the top and then two smaller shirts which have been condensed. And we have to ask ourselves, if these pins are being seen on a mobile device, how clear would it be? I mean, we take a look at this one, beer, and then we've got, you know, the hang up and the answer sign from, uh, from a mobile device. I'm sure it's quite interesting, but again, if you're looking at it from a mobile device, the person who put up this post, unfortunately, did not keep to the pin dimensions that Pinterest normally recommends. And I'll get to that as we are moving on in today's episode. So I just want to take uh, a few moments to compare the t-shirt sellers who are pinning on Pinterest compared to some other niches out there. Um, that are outside of the print-on-demand, outside of the t-shirt designing um, sphere. So if we just click on the next tab here, um, here we have the do it DIY, the do-it-yourself um, niche. And as you can see here, the pins have a huge number of, of impressions and likes and, and action on them. I mean, this one has 478, this is 528, this one has 10.2 thousand, okay? This one has 3.8 thousand. So what is it about these pins that make them do really, really well as compared to pins pertaining to t-shirt sales? Well, again, we're going to get onto that in a few moments. Let's just take a look at another niche, and this is the cooking niche, okay? And as you can see here, we have one with 5.7 thousand different types of, of 
impressions, likes, dislikes, what have you, but there's 5.7 thousand people who have responded to that pin. Okay, if we scroll down, we have 1.4 thousand, 184, 258. So there is a lot more action happening on these particular pins for the cooking niche as opposed to those which are trying to sell and market their t-shirts. I mean, this one has 6.5 thousand, 155. Even the lowest ones um, in terms of likes are far outweighing those of the t-shirt pins. So we need to actually look and see what is it about these pins that are actually making people want to click? Now, let's take a look at some of these pins in details. I mean, if we look at this one, it has 167 likes, but we have some text overlay. Again, look at this one, make ahead Greek chicken gyros, okay? So if we look at it, we've got um, a nice text overlay, which is helping the design to stand out, the pin to stand out, and it's a very long pin. So it's something that you're gonna be able to see even on a mobile device. If we hop back to the DIY, um, here we got another one, DIY sweater pumpkin. Okay, I was saying DIY, I don't know why I was saying DIY, it should be DIY, I apologize for that. It just clicked in now. Um, but again, even this one, fall DIY fabric pumpkins using an old sock. So it isn't just a graphic, it were trying to entice a person visiting Pinterest to click on it to learn a little bit more, okay. So now what we need to do is we need to see how we're going to use the tools which are available to us in the print on demand sphere to try and emulate these kinds of pins in order to encourage customers to click in and to check out what it is that we are trying to sell. So let me take you through the process that I have been utilizing as of late. It hasn't been long, but you know, it's in doing some research, I've been thinking about what is it that I could do to my pins to improve upon them, to entice people to want to click. And in taking a lot of these particular pins as an example, as motivation and inspiration, and in taking into consideration the tools that I have available, that being Canva, um, Placid, and Vexels, I'm going to take you through the process that I utilize to create my pins. You're welcome to emulate them, uh, and hopefully, in doing so, over the next few weeks, hopefully we should be able to see some kind of return, some kind of action, some kind of movement with respect to the pins in order to drive more traffic to my respective print-on-demand shops. Okay, so given the fact now that any and all Christmas themed designs should have been uploaded to our respective print-on-demand um, shops, um, I thought that it would be an interesting idea to look ahead in the next month, that being January, in order to see what kind of events, if any, I could potentially create a design for in order to start uploading them in the next few days to make them available for anybody who might be looking for potential design to purchase in the month of January. Now, yes, I know January does tend to be a little bit of a slow time in the print-on-demand field. Most people would have, you know, spent a lot of money during the holiday season and probably are trying to recuperate. But in terms of this particular example, it can easily be adapted to any and all of the months in the calendar year. Now, when I talk about calendar year, um, I want to share this particular website that I have on my screen here. It's called daysoftheyear.com. It's a wonderful website that I utilize very often in order to see what kind of holidays and events are being highlighted on any given day throughout the calendar year. And in doing research for this particular um, episode, I went into January and I found a very interesting event on the 3rd of January, which is the Festival of Sleep Day. And I thought mm, that would be very interesting given the fact that most people would have spent a lot of time going to different events and partying and, you know, all of the busy planning for the Christmas and New Year's season. The, one of the things I would really like to do is to actually kick back, relax, catch up on some sleep and rejuvenate themselves. So I thought, let's create some designs pertaining to this event, and then we're gonna create some pins in order to drive traffic to these designs through Pinterest. So what I did was I utilized Vexels, a fantastic platform, in order to come up with some very interesting designs pertaining to the Festival of Sleep Day. And then I took those designs and I actually uploaded them into Placeit so that I could highlight the greatness of both platforms. Again, you could easily create designs in Placeit and you could easily create mockups in Vexels, but I wanted to give both equal weighting in this particular episode because they are two 
really amazing platforms that I use on a regular basis. And I didn't feel it would be fair to obviously showcase one and not the other. So just turning over to a slideshow I created where I'm going to show you this was the design that I created on Vexels and this is the mock-up that I created in Placeit. So after a little bit of work in Canva as my third tool in creating an effective pin, I came up with this particular design. Now let me just move myself out of the way here. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a really effective mock-up. I've got a design which is nice, crisp, and clear, and then I created a little bit of a blurb. Sleep, why it's the best thing to do. Click here to learn more. So now what I'm going to do is in this particular pin, I will find and do a little bit of research of why it's really great to sleep, and I will create a small blurb that will obviously whet people's appetites for information, for content, and then through that blurb, I will then obviously encourage them and invite them to click on the link to visit my shop in order to try and gain access to this shirt, in order to purchase it on a t-shirt, on a mug, or what have you, okay? So the next design over here, again, this was all related to the Festival of Sleep, Best holiday ever, Festival of Sleep. And as you can see here, we have a sloth sleeping nice and comfortably on a plush pillow. And we had January 3rd, so that people will realize that this particular event happens on the 3rd as a small little calendar in the background. And in terms of a mock-up, created something like this. Why you should ditch all the work. Click to learn more. Okay, so people love to find ways to get out of doing work. And they might say, okay, well, this sounds interesting. What's it all about? Let me click on it to learn a bit more. And again, in this particular scenario, I would just you know, provide them with a little blurb. So I'm not gonna write a romance novel, but what I am gonna do is I'm going to give them a little bit of information. Then I'm going to lead them to obviously click and visit my print on demand shop in order to get this cute design of a slot sleeping saying best holiday ever. I mean, who wouldn't appreciate a holiday where you get to sleep and just kick back and relax. All right, another design I created, Perfect day for a nap. So here I'm tackling the cat niche. I'm mixing it. I'm cross-stitching it with this festival of sleep day. And in terms of a pen, I created something like this. Let me just move me again or out of the way. I'm always in the way. So celebrate the festival of sleep, January 3rd. Click here to learn more. So as you can see, I tried different scenarios, different combinations of text overlays with the various mock-ups because I don't know what is going to resonate with potential people, with potential customers who are seeing my, my pins via Pinterest. So I created a number of different things and what I will be doing over the course of the coming days is seeing which ones actually gain traction and which ones don't. And the ones that do are the types that I'm going to utilize in terms of a combination of mock-up and text overlay for my future pins for any and all of my other designs. So let's take a look at another one here. Okay, so happy to celebrate Festival of Sleep Day, January 3rd. So we've got this sloth, you know, wearing one of those sleep blindfolds, just chilling out over a branch. And in terms of a pin, again, here we go. We created a nice pin where we zoomed in on the beautiful model with the mock-up on it. And then in terms of a text overlay, we said this is one day which gives us all the reason to sleep a little more. Click here to learn more. So again, we are always providing a call to action to anybody seeing our pins on Pinterest to entice them in conjunction with the mock-up and the text overlay so that they will want to click on it and learn a little bit more. Okay, and the final one that I want to show you is Magical Dreams Festival of Sleep Day. And here I obviously cross niche the festival with unicorns, which lo loads of people really appreciate and really like. And instead of saying sweet dreams, I obviously keyed in the term magical dreams. And in terms of a pin, as you can see here, I kept to the green design in the background. I said, on this day, don't miss the most beautiful thing on this planet. Click here to find out more. And obviously, once they click in, they're going to read a little bit about the beauty and the benefits of getting a good night's sleep. And then again, as I stated with the other pins, I'm going to lead them to my shop through the text invitation so that anybody who clicked on it because of the fact that they like unicorns and more importantly because they love sleep might want to actually wear this t-shirt leading up to the festival of sleep day and hey some people even order exercise t-shirts because they enjoy sleeping in extra oversized t-shirts so again you just never know why people visit our particular print on demand shops in order to buy things 
what you want to do is you want to try different combinations in order to entice them to actually visit your shop and hopefully make the purchase. Okay, so now before we actually go into the actual creation of the pin through Canva, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to actually do a little bit of research on Redbubble in order to see if there is any kind of interest with respect to the Festival of Sleep Day. Sort of to do a little bit of research without actually going in and creating designs if there isn't any kind of interest or if it's very oversaturated because understandably to try and compete with keywords that maybe perhaps have you know over 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 designs it's not always that easy to be seen. I mean, you could do it and hope for the best that you've discovered and maybe actually take out adverts to actually get people to be interested in learning more about your particular product. But I tend to try and shoot for, you know, um, different niches where the competition is relatively low, under a thousand, so that I can actually go in and hopefully dominate that particular keyword or keyword phrase with my design so that obviously when people come to visit that particular um, keyword on Redbubble or any of the other print-on-demand platforms that I use, they're going to see my designs, which is effectively what we want them to do. We want them to see our designs over anybody else's so that they will actually be more enticed to make a purchase from our respective shops as opposed to somebody else. So going on to Redbubble, I had keyed in Festival of Sleep Day. And as you can see here, at the time of publishing this particular episode, there are only 60 results, okay? And even if we had to take a look at the different types of results, or rather the designs that are up on for this particular keyword phrase, there's very few that are actually good and are actually focused on Festival of Sleep Day. I mean, we've got one over here, which is quite cute over here, okay? And it's on a mouse pad. These three over here, has absolutely nothing to do with sleep. This one has absolutely nothing to do. It's more of a Christmas niche. So I think somebody was obviously trying to keyword spam over there. We've got a Halloween design. We've got a sticker that is less than desirable for purchasing because clearly the person who uploaded it did a horrible job in terms of making sure that the design looked good on a sticker. Okay. And again, as we can see here, there are very few designs that are actually focused on the festival of sleep day so for me that is actually gold because what i can do is that i can make sure that when i'm actually uploading my designs i mean surgery interrupt but look at these ones over here i mean these ones all right it has the word sleep in it but there's absolutely nothing in terms of a design here neither with this one neither with this one so if i had to go and put in these designs up into redbubble I know that when people visit Redbubble and type in Festival of Sleep Day, because of the fact that I'm going to be very, very strategic and very wise with respect to the titling, the description, and the keyword phrases that I'm going to be using for this particular niche, my designs are going to show up high in the search for these listings. And I'm actually going to do very, very well compared to the competition, which is obviously here on Redbubble, as you can see. Again, really in truth, I only have one design that I will have to compete with. Okay, so now let's create another pin based on another design I created just to show you the process that I went through in order to create those pins that I showed you earlier on in this episode. So to do so, we're going to hop over to Canva. And what I'm going to do is what I did here was I typed in Pinterest pins and I'm actually on the template section over here. And as you can see here, we've got a number of different templates that we could actually utilize in order to create fantastic eye-catching pins for our print-on-demand designs. Now, clearly you're not going to find a category called print-on-demand or t-shirt. So what you need to do is to browse through some of the other templates that Canva have on offer and try to envision how you could actually modify and tweak the template to fit your particular needs for your particular design. Okay, so if we just had to go down to birthday Pinterest pin, okay, this one caught my attention and it is free. I am using the free version. There are a number of templates here where you have to have the subscription um, version of Canva, but if you don't have it or you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. There are quite a number of free templates that you can use to modify and obviously tweak to fit your needs. So if I just click on this one here, 
It says here, 20 ways to celebrate a botanical birthday party. Clearly, we do not want to obviously put this pin up for a particular uh, t-shirt design pertaining to the Festival of Sleep. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the mock-up that I created for this particular new design. And effectively, it's a design based on sleep cross niche with, with an avocado. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag it in, wait for Canva to upload it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click and drag the photo into the area of the photo. And as you can see, Canva has already embedded the photo within the parameters of the photo. And we have that sticky tape effect look too as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the caption over here so that it will entice people seeing my pin on Pinterest to want to click on it to learn a little bit more. And I thought given the fact that we are talking about sleep, sleep has a number of benefits for us. So people love lists, people love infographics on Pinterest. So we're going to give them a small list. So I'm going to change 20 to the number 5. And I'm going to change this caption to five benefits that sleep provide. You'll be very surprised. So right there and then it's going to grab people's attention to say, okay, well, I know about benefits, but what kind of benefits is this person talking about? So right there and then we've actually grabbed a person's attention for our pin. And the fact that they click on it is sending a message to Pinterest that people are engaging with the pin and it's very worth showing it to other pinners on Pinterest. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download it. And while that is downloading, um, I then need to think of an interesting description that I'm going to put in for the pin. Okay, so now that the design has downloaded into my hard drive, it's time to work on the copy that I'm going to be including with the pin. And given the fact that Pinterest only allows for a maximum of 420 characters in the description, it's really important that the copy that I come up with is going to be obviously within that character limit so that I'm not going about creating a lot of text on a Word document and then trying to you know, copy it onto Pinterest and finding out that I've actually exceeded the 420 character limit because then that can be very frustrating and stressful because then you have to try and see what text you're going to remove and will it still make sense and will it be enticing enough to get the person visiting or rather clicking on the pin to want to come and visit my shop. So in order to try and minimize that kind of stress and tension, I like to use a website called Character Count Online, as you can see on my screen here. And what I did was I already went ahead and created some copy over here, which hopefully will be of interest to you in terms of the format, uh, in terms of how I went about creating the copy that you can actually emulate with your own particular pins too as well. Now, what is important is this information at the bottom here, mainly this one, this number over here, 417. This is the current number of characters that I have on the copy that I created, and I'm well within the 420 characters that Pinterest obviously calls for. So let's just go through it quickly. So the pin stated that I was going to be providing five interesting benefits um, that sleep provides, and I did. In fact, here we have get sick less frequently, makes you more alert, reduces stress and improves one's mood, lowers your risk of health problems like heart disease, and helps to improve your memory. Now that I've provided that information, I'm just going to give them an invitation, an informal invitation to visit my shop through the following sentence. So I stated, so on the 3rd of January, join in in celebrating the Festival of Sleep Day. Catch up with some much needed rest and do it in style with this fun resting avocado character enjoying the best holiday ever. Click the link to order yours today. Sweet dreams. So as you can see here, I've got some keywords in here too as well. We've got the word avocado, we've got festival of sleep. So this is all going to send information to the algorithm on Pinterest that this particular pin is dealing with sleep, but it's also enticing people to consider and to learn a little bit more about the festival of sleep as well. So now that I have this copy ready and I'm happy with it, it's time to get my mock-up, it's time to get the pin that I created on Canva and this copy and, and start creating the pin on Pinterest. Okay, so here we are now on Pinterest in the pin builder section and I got here simply by navigating to Pinterest and I clicked on create here and in the drop down menu I chose create pin and obviously Pinterest opens the following page 
for me to be able to insert the pertinent information for the pin that I am creating. So first and foremost, I want to drag and drop the graphic that I created on Canva. I have it off screen here, I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag it and boom, Pinterest fits it nicely within the parameters and it fit nicely and to the parameters of Pinterest because when I created the pin on Canva, I made sure that the dim dimensions for the pin were 1000 pixels wide by 1500 pixels tall. So whether you're using Canva or Pinterest or Photopea or whatever image editing program that you want to use in order to create your pins, make sure that you are maximizing your pins potential by actually keeping to the pixel dimensions that Pinterest requests. And again, that is 1000 pixels wide by 1500 pixels or 1500 pixels tall. So now that I have my graphic in place, it's time to add a nice keyword rich title. So given the fact that we've got an avocado in the design, that it's obviously pertaining to sleep, the festival of sleep, and that you know it's the best holiday ever because again, who doesn't like to sleep? Let's actually use these keywords in the title. So I'm gonna type in avocado, Festival of Sleep, Best Holiday Ever t-shirt. Okay, so we're actually telling the person, we're telling Pinterest, hey, this particular pin deals with avocados, the Festival of Sleep, holidays, and a t-shirt. So we've given it some really pertinent and interesting keywords to work with in terms of trying to determine to whom this pin should be shown to. Okay, so now that we have our title in place, it's time to get our description. So to do that, we're going to go back to our online character count uh, website. We're going to right click on the highlighted text, we're going to copy it, and go back to Pinterest, and we're going to paste it accordingly. Okay, now we're going to get rid of the extra spaces. So as you can see here, we are well within the character limit that Pinterest advocates for. And then what we can do is we can click on the alt text section. This is a very important section to fill in. Don't leave it up blank because you effectively be leaving money on the table. Fill in every aspect that Pinterest wants you to fill in with keyword rich text to make sure that you put yourself in the best possible position to have your pin seen. So in this particular case, explain what people can see in the pin. So they're seeing, um, so uh, a fun avocado design uh, focusing on the festival of sleep holiday that occurs on the 3rd of January. Okay. And again, I could continue typing as much as I want to. You have a number of characters, as you can see here. Um, there's still 404 characters left to be filled in, but for the purposes of this particular episode, we'll just leave it at that. And then obviously, all that is left is to add a destination link to where you would like customers to click and visit to, be it Redbubble, TeePublic, Sazzle, Society6, Merch by Amazon, whichever print-on-demand platform that you are utilizing in order to gain more traffic to your print-on-demand shop. Now, an interesting point to keep in mind. You could technically keep the same copy and create multiple pins for this particular design. What's important, and Pinterest really states that it wants to see fresh pins up, and that's where it gives the most importance to, is that you want to make sure that you change the graphic for your pin. So if you have um, a platform like Place it or a platform like Vexels, which will allow you to create a number of mockups. You could effectively download 5, 10, 15, 20, even 100 different mockups, drag them onto Canva, and create an interesting pin based on all of those particular designs, and then just come to Pinterest and create a whole bunch of pins using the same text if you wanted to. You could use the same text overlay, that's fine too as well. What's important for Pinterest is that the graphic is different so that it's always looking fresh and you could effectively have 5, 10, 15, 20, even 100 different pins all pointing potential customers to your print-on-demand platform for that particular design. So you can see the potential that Pinterest has on offer and in order to do that, um, if you have a batch of them, all you need to do is continue pressing this plus symbol over here. And as you click on the plus symbol, it opens a blank pin. And then you just do it again and fill in all of the details, drag and drop your graphic, fill in the details again using your copy and paste. 
and then publish them to whatever board that you might have on Pinterest, be it an individual board that you created or maybe a group board that you have joined. And I always highly recommend that you have a nice healthy balance between the two. Create a few of your own boards, but also jump onto the bandwagon of finding group boards on Pinterest and joining them because those are the type of boards that gain a lot of action and a lot of traction. And people who are looking for a particular design for a particular niche that you might have designed for, they'll inevitably be directed to these particular group boards. And if your design is within the group board subfolders, then there's a great chance that people are gonna see your design, click on it, and visit your shop to hopefully make the purchase. So there you have it everybody. As you can see, Pinterest is a fantastic tool that you can utilize to help drive traffic from Pinterest to your respective print-on-demand platforms, whichever one that you use, it really doesn't matter. What's important is that we are trying to create content for the platform that will get people interested in wanting to learn more. It isn't just enough to you know, download a mock-up of your design on a t-shirt and then just slap it up on Pinterest and expect people to be interested enough to click on it and come and visit your particular print-on-demand shop. You have to sort of throw out the proverbial carrot in front of the donkey in order to get them to come and click and see a little bit more about what your design has to offer and give them a little bit of information as to why they should consider clicking and coming to your shop in order to take a look at your design. Customers crave information, particularly those who are on Pinterest. They like to learn new and interesting things. It isn't just enough to provide a mock-up and tell them click here and come and visit my shop because more often than not, customers have become accustomed to these things and basically it just gels over them. If you try to go and look on any other niche, the do-it-yourself, the, med the medical, the nutrition, the exercise niches on Pinterest, you'll see that a lot of them are driving traffic to particular blogs, but because they give a potential visitor some information at the beginning to sort of whet their appetite in terms of what it is that they're going to be seeing when they visit that particular blog or website. We need to do the same thing with respect to our print-on-demand business. We need to give them something to entice them to click on and open up the pin to read the blurb, whatever it is that we've actually put into the pin and engage them enough and stoke their curiosity enough to want to click on the link to visit your shop to learn a little bit more about how your design looks not only on the product that you are basically advertising in inverted commas on the pin, but also in terms of all of your other designs that you have available, activated for that particular design on your respective shop. So for 2022, I really want to encourage, I want to challenge each and every one of you who are watching this episode to take you know, the dive, to take the leap into using Pinterest. And don't just go, take the easy route of just uploading generic mockups that come, that are provided from the respective platforms. Take that little step extra. If you have Placeit, if you have Vexels, utilize those tools to create effective looking pins Pin them onto Pinterest on a regular and consistent basis. Remember, Pinterest likes to see consistency, well, basically like any other platform. They want to see consistency in the way you use their platform. And through that consistency, they will reward you by actually showing your pins to more and more people, potential customers who can then effectively come and visit your shops and maybe perhaps you can convert them into sales. So there's a lot of work to do, but once you get tucked into it, once you start gaining that experience of how to doing it, and hey, listen, with the tools that are out there in terms of Placeit, Vexels, Canva, as you saw, the way I went about it in today's episode, yeah, it does take a little bit of time at the beginning, but once you start getting the hang of it, once you start getting into practice from it, and you create your own specific templates that are unique to the brand that you want to portray, it won't take long to create hundreds of different types of pins over the course of the next year and beyond so that you can actually maintain a real strong presence on Pinterest and actually gain more followers and gain more potential customers to your print on demand sale, which again could effectively convert into potential sales. So I really hope that you found this episode valuable. If there's a comment or question that you'd like to leave in the comments below, please do so. I'd love to hear from you. If there's still something that you're uncertain about, drop me a comment or question. I'd be more than happy to clarify. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now.